Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over how to auscultate heart sounds. What I want to be doing is I'm going to show you how to listen to heart sounds on a real person. I'm going to show you the anatomical sites, how to identify S1, S2, talk about those S3, S4 and heart murmurs, those extra sounds you may hear. But first let's cover the basics. Okay, why do we listen to heart sounds? What is the purpose? Well, one thing is we want to make sure the rhythm is regular. We want to count the rate. But we're also, one of the big things is that we're assessing how those heart valves are closing. Because whenever you are hearing S1, S2, those are valve, valves closing. S1 are your tricuspid and mitral valves closing. And S2 is the sound of your aortic and pulmonic valves closing. And while you're listening to heart sounds, you'll be trying to distinguish, am I hearing S1, S2? And then you're gonna be positioning the patient in a little bit different positions, and you're gonna be listening for those extra heart sounds, like S3, S4, and heart murmurs. So first, let's go over the anatomical sides. Here in a second, you're gonna see what it actually looks like whenever um, you're looking at the anatomical sites on the chest, but let me cover them real fast. If you want, you can write this down so you can remember it. The key to help you identify these anatomical sites is to find the clavicle on the patient and then go down and find the angle of Lewis. It's a joint little area. And the second rib comes out from there. And right below that, we're gonna start on the right side, is the intercostal space. And right there, left, I mean, right of that border is the aortic valve. And the aortic valve represents, when it closes, the sound of S2. That and the pulmonic valve normally close together. So when they close together, they're semilunar valves, you will hear S2. Then right over on the left side, in the same space, second intercostal space, you will find the pulmonic valve. Then down in the third space, you will find herbs point. And this is just an area where um, you're separating the base from the apex. It's just the midway point between those two areas. And then you have the fourth intercostal space, which right next to the border of that is the tricuspid valve. You'll find that on the left side as well. And the tricuspid and mitral valves when they close together simultaneously, you will hear S1, and they are found in the base. Then you go down a little bit in the fifth intercostal space, but midclavicular, which is the midway point of your clavicle, and you will find the mitral valve, also called bicuspid valve. And these are your avioventricular valves, your AV valves, and this is also where you will hear the point of maximal impulse. And also, it's important to know, the bottom part of the heart down in this area is the apex. And the top part of this area is called the base. You'll want to remember that. Now let's look and auscultate these areas and see what they look like on a real person. Okay, at first I wanted to start out just showing you on the chest what is, where you're going to actually place your chest piece whenever you're listening to the heart. What I like to do whenever I'm first starting out is either have the patient set up or lie down, and I like to start in the aortic and work my way down. Remember the mnemonic, all patients take medicine, and herbs point is in between the pulmonic and the tricuspid. And whenever your semilunar valves are your aortic and pulmonic, and when they close, you hear S2. So you're gonna hear S2 the most, at the base of the heart, and then whenever you're hearing the tricuspid and mitral, which are your avioventricular valves, which are AV valves, you're hearing S1 whenever they close. So let's use a chest piece and auscultate. Okay, whenever I'm beginning auscultation of the heart, what I like to do is remove the clothing, and um, I like to have the patient set up. You can also have them lay down. And I listen with the diaphragm of my stethoscope first, and then I'll switch to the bell and redo all the anatomical sites. But I like to listen with diaphragm because you can hear S2 and S1 the best with this, along with your aortic and pulmonary pulmonic regurgitation murmurs. So um, I start at the aortic, remember the mnemonic, all patients take medicine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm listening for S1 and S2, I'm distinguishing them. And I'm also listening for S1 splits or, or S2 splits. And this is just where the valves are not closing at the same time, so you may hear a little bit of an extra noise. So we're gonna start in the aortic over here. 
And what I'm hearing is lub dub, lub dub, and dub is louder because dub represents S2. And in the base of the heart, you're gonna hear S2 louder than how you would hear it down there. Then I'm just gonna inch over here to the pulmonic. And I hear the same thing. I don't know any splitting. S1 and S2 are closing at the same time, no extra heart sounds. Then I'm gonna inch down to herbs point. This is just the halfway point between the base and the apex of the heart. Now I'm gonna inch down to the tricuspid. And this time I'm hearing lub dub. And lub is louder because this is signifying more where you're gonna hear S1. And lub is represented by S1 and I hear that louder in this area. And then I'm gonna go over to the mitral area, midclavicular. And this, hearing the same thing, lub dub, nice, good rhythm. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna switch over to my bell and I'm just gonna repeat. And what I'm really paying attention to is I'm listening for any type of murmurs or those low pitch sounds. You really can't hear S3 and S4 that great in this position. That's why here in a second we're gonna get on our left side and you hear that best in the apex. But what I'm listening for is maybe any murmurs, blowing, swishing noise. And I'm not hearing anything. Now, one thing you may find hard whenever you are auscultating is distinguishing S1 from S2 and some tips to help you with that. Again, S2 is gonna be louder here at the base and S1 is gonna be louder here at the apex, so that can help you with that. Or if you're still having trouble, you don't can't really differentiate, um, you can feel on the carotid artery and listen at the apex of the heart. And whenever you feel a pulsation and you, feel, you hear that noise, you've identified S1 because the carotid pulsation and the sound signify S1. Or if you have a patient on a bedside monitor you can look at your QRS complex and the R wave, the big spike. Whenever you see that spike and you hear the noise, that is S1. So those are just some little tips on how you can differentiate between S1 and S2. Now we've assist the patient onto their left side and the whole purpose of doing this is majority of your heart is on your left side. So whenever you turn them, have them go there, it pushes the heart over a little bit more just so you can hear those anatomical sites a little bit better. And what we are interested in is the apex of the heart. And we're gonna be listening with the bell of our stethoscope because we're listening for low pitch noises. And if the patient was gonna have an S3, S4, or a mitral stenosis murmur, this is where we most likely hear it. So what we're gonna do is just find the midclavicular, the fifth intercostal space. We're gonna just listen over there and we're listening for S3 or S4 and murmurs. And S3, is heard after S2. So again, that's why you have to distinguish between S1 and S2. And S3 is gonna sound like a lub dub ta, lub dub ta, because it's heard after S2. S4 is going to be heard before S1, and it's gonna sound like this, ta lub dub, ta lub dub, ta lub dub. And a murmur, of course, is just that blowing, swishing noise. Okay, last, what I like to do is I like to have the patient set up and lean forward and then have them exhale. And I'm going to listen for, what I'm looking for is murmurs, aortic and pulmonic murmurs. And I'm gonna be listening at the aortic and the pulmonic sites with the diaphragm because it's good at picking up those murmurs. And what's happening is that the chest, the heart behind the sternum is just moving a little bit forward so we can hear those anatomical positions a little bit better and I'm listening for like a blowing, a swishing noise. And if one's present, you'll want to grade that. And here on your screen, you'll see what the grading scale is for that. One, a grade one is hard to hear and it goes all the, all the way up to six. And this is the loudest. You could literally lift your chest piece off the patient's chest like this, and you could hear just the blowing and swishing noise. And you could also feel on the chest a thrill, which is like a vibration on the skin.
Okay, so that is how you auscultate heart sounds. Now, be sure to check out my other video where I go in depth about these heart sounds. I talk in great detail about them. A card should be popping up so you can access that video so you can familiarize yourself with these heart sounds. Thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.